Once you've decided on your narrow and specific research topic, the next step is to turn it into a research question and to be able to rephrase that research question as a thesis statement. You need a research question because otherwise you will be overwhelmed with information and options. A research question helps you select pieces of information that are relevant and discard the rest. It also helps you understand how all those separate pieces of information will be related and interconnected in your paper. First, I want to simplify the process of creating a research question by talking about what you should not do. If a question has a simple yes or no answer, like do raccoons hibernate in the winter, it's not going to be a good research question. Yes-no questions don't give you enough to write about. The same is true for questions that have a simple factual answer, like how many people die in skiing accidents each year. A good research question produces an answer that gives you plenty to talk about. You can analyze, in other words, break it down into pieces. You can synthesize, in other words, put the pieces together. You can explain, demonstrate, and illustrate. You can make arguments where you back up your claims with evidence in order to prove your point. The research question gives you opportunities to deploy different arguments to support your answer. It also requires you to present evidence and cite the ideas of other authorities on the topic. You will be able to fill up all the required pages of your paper with a carefully structured presentation of why your answer is the best answer out there. Looking at the topic of George Washington's military career in the French and Indian War, a possible research question is, was George Washington an effective military commander in the French and Indian War? The answer could conceivably go either way. There's room for debate. That room for debate needs to exist so you have something to say, but don't make the mistake of defending an unpopular position just for the sake of being contrary. Much of the time, positions are unpopular for a good reason. There needs to be room for debate, but not too much room. Your goal should be to contribute something real and substantial to overall scholarly conversation about the subject. Once you have your research question, the next step is creating a thesis statement. This part is simple. The thesis statement is your answer to your research question. So if my research question is, was George Washington an effective military commander in the French and Indian War, my thesis statement is either, yes he was and here's why, or no he wasn't and here's why. Of course, when I write the introduction to my paper, I have to phrase it more formally and with more detail. It could be, George Washington was an effective military commander in the French and Indian War because his leadership in the Battle of Monongahela helped to save what remained of General Braddock's army. Or, it could be, George Washington's failure to adequately fortify Fort Necessity an inability to enlist the help of native fighters in that region made him an ineffective military commander during the French and Indian War. You're probably going to want to write and rewrite it a few times until it flows well and says exactly what you want it to mean. Try to make it as clear as possible and give it some punch. It needs to spark interest and launch you into your explanation of how and why what you said is true. Let's do a few more examples. Be aware that I'm making no attempt to be factually correct here. I just want to show you the structure. So if your research question is, what impact do invasive fish have on waterways? Your thesis statement could be, invasive carp have spread throughout the Mississippi River Basin and destroyed the river ecosystems by stripping riverbeds of algae and plants. And if your research question is, what is the significance of sheep imagery in the Christian Bible's book of Revelation, your thesis statement could be, in the book of Revelation, the sheep symbolizes both obedience to God's will and a sacrificial offering to God to expiate sin. And if your research question is, what is the relationship between childhood trauma and dissociative identity disorder in adulthood, the thesis statement could be, while most adults with dissociative identity disorder have a history of childhood trauma, only a very small fraction of children who survive trauma develop dissociative identity disorder as adults because most of them deploy other coping mechanisms. So, long story short, your thesis statement is just the answer to your research question, but make sure to phrase it in a way that properly leads into the main points of your paper. Without a thesis statement, you would have dozens of pieces of information to give your reader, but no real idea what order to present them in, or how to transition from one to the next. A thesis statement helps you to get your ducks in a row, so to speak. With the thesis statement, every piece of information is part of an arsenal of evidence to support the thesis. 
you connect them with logical arguments and transitions. The thesis statement is what you go back to every time you ask yourself, what do I say next? Look at what you've already said and say, well, if I were my reader, what would I be confused about now? What point would I be challenging now? What would I want to know next? When you answer that in a systematic way, deploying your arguments and evidence, that is the content of your paper or article that you're writing.